Hello, sunshine. Let's get our energy up, up, up. It's Thursday, November 16th. Happy Friday Eve. I'm Coy Wire. We are CNN 10, and we start with a gathering of world leaders. This week in San Francisco, the United States is hosting representatives from the APEC, or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. And that's just what it is. APEC formed in 1989. It's now made up of 21 countries that all touch the Pacific Ocean, from Thailand to Australia to Chile. Now, these countries work together to create agreements that help strengthen the members' economies by improving relations and promoting trade. Now, one way they can do that is by limiting tariffs. A tariff is a tax added to goods coming in from other countries. The thinking is that when imports are more expensive, people will be more inclined to buy goods that are already made at home. But countries love and need to export to bring more money into their economy. So limiting tariffs between each other, that can be friendly and profitable. Tariffs, the climate, and the war in the Middle East are just a few of the many topics up for discussion at this year's APEC summit. There's also a much anticipated meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and China's President Xi Jinping. Here's Mark Stewart with more. This highly anticipated meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden is a big deal. It was in February that a Chinese balloon was shot down over American airspace, adding even more tension to an already frosty relationship. But things have since stabilized. During this highly anticipated meeting in California, don't expect the two sides to come to an agreement on thorny issues such as Taiwan or human rights, but rather officials say this is an opportunity to set some barriers and limits to create some calm between the two nations. Right now, both nations are witnessing the war in Ukraine as well as the war between Israel and Hamas. This meeting is a chance to prevent the relations between the U.S. and China from deteriorating with the goal of creating some stability. Despite the differences, this is also a chance to build on economic relations as both nations have benefited from trade. This meeting comes as both President Xi and President Biden face domestic challenges of their own. Mark Stewart, CNN, Beijing. Next up, there is a milk shortage in cafeterias all across the country, but it's not because there's not enough milk to go around. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, says multiple states are affected by supply chain issues related to packaging. It's a dairy precarious situation for distributors who sell cartons of milk to places like schools, nursing homes, and correctional facilities. They're running out of the cartons that hold the milk. Typically, public schools are required to offer fat free free, 1%, or flavored milk at breakfast and lunch. But the USDA is relaxing these requirements for now. Uh, some schools are transitioning to alternatives like juice, shelf-stable milk, and bottled water. Some have even considered pouring individual cups from big jugs of milk themselves. There's no certain time frame for when this shortage might end. 10 second trivia. Maputo is the capital city of what African nation? Mozambique, Morocco, Mali, or Madagascar? Maputo is a port city, the largest city and capital city of Mozambique. That's the correct answer here. All right, let's dive on in now to the aquamarine waters around Mozambique, considered some of the richest in the world, full of fauna and marine life. It's a hot spot for people who love to dive and for researchers looking to work with coastal sea life. The diving industry there could be a big part of the local economy by employing Mozambicans and by helping to promote sustainability. Could be, but it's not, at least not yet. Check this out. Mozambique has one of the longest coastlines in Africa with an abundance in marine life. In some areas of the world, you can go and dive with whales, or you can go and dive with whale sharks, or you can go and dive with mantas. Here, we have it all. Making it a prime spot for divers. Boosting local jobs and ocean conservation. One of the things that the diving community can do is shine a light on, on some of these areas, especially here in Africa, that have been so undervalued for so long. This is Mozambique's diving scene. Mm -hmm. 
I was just so enthralled by what I saw here. I, I just, I mean, you could walk over the backs of mantas and whale sharks. They littered the surface of the water and just so many megafauna, whales and dolphins and marlin jumping out. And I just thought, what is this place? World-renowned conservation biologist Andrea Marshall has been working in Mozambique for the past 20 years. I was talking to people about, you know, these diving destinations that revolve around a single species. People will fly across the world to go to a, a location where you can dive with humpbacks, or people will fly across the world to go to a destination with just whale sharks. Nicknamed Queen of the Mantas for her pioneering research work on manta rays, Andrea is using her fame to highlight other endangered species and ocean habitats. Over the course of, of my career, I started to see that there was a lot of anthropogenic threats that were starting to creep in. Um, we started to see a lot of influence from industrial fishing moving in, and even the artisanal fishermen that, that are kind of subsistence fishing along the coast started using more aggressive gears like long lines and gill nets here. And I started to see a decline in a lot of the populations of the animals that we were studying. And so I realized that when I finished my PhD, if I was to move on, that none of this information would be captured, that this conservation probably wouldn't take off here. And so for us, it meant, well, if we're gonna take this journey, it might be a 40 or 50 or 60 year journey, but I'm all in. I mean, that's what I wanna do is, is protect this coastline. Andrea believes that a thriving dive industry will help make ocean conservation a bigger priority for local communities. Connecting people with nature is the most powerful way to be able to effectively switch that light on and make them care. One of the things I'm really excited about is the synergy that's forming um, here in the, in, the, in the coastal communities between dive center operators and government, scientists, other stakeholders. Basically, everybody wants the same thing. And as the diving scene develops further, Andrea is keen for sustainability to be a priority. Tourism actually is one of the biggest threats um, to the environment that you can get, and it's been shown through a lot of different scientific studies. We also have to be careful with how we develop tourism. The dive centers here in Mozambique, because they're working with researchers, have become really aware of you know, what the limits are and, and, and how they probably don't want to develop this area too quickly um, because it's very difficult to wind things back when they get out of control. It's much better to develop things slowly and sustainably. We have to show caution and we just have to um, put the animals and, and the environments first. For today's story getting a 10 out of 10, we're drawing attention to the world's largest pencil collection. Aaron Batholomew of Iowa got into his hobby of pencil collecting as a first grader, collecting everywhere from local businesses to flea markets. He even has a pencil that's 100 years old. Now, Aaron didn't know how many of them he had until he learned the Guinness World Record was 24,000. But I hope the old record wasn't written in pencil because when Aaron put in the work of counting all of his 69,255 pencils, he became the new Guinness World Record holder. And even though his collection has already rewritten the record books, he's already in the hunt for more. Right on, Aaron. Well done. I'm more of a pen guy. Pencils are kind of sketchy. I have some puns about broken pencils, I could tell, but they're pointless. That technically wasn't our top 10 out of 10. It was a number two. Our best story of the day is going to you, especially the superstars at Woodlawn Leadership Academy in Shreveport, Louisiana. Nights, you keep on shining bright. And Whitefish High School, the Bulldogs in Whitefish, Montana. Roo, roo, roo. Much love, many blessings. I've got a date with you, penciled in for tomorrow, Friday. I'm Koi Wire, and we are CNN 10.